Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Worcester Public Library. I'm Joy, a librarian here at WPL, and this is my colleague, Taylor. Hello. Today, we're here to discuss new releases for the month of May. As usual, I will do the nonfiction and Taylor will do the fiction. All of these titles will be available this month in print. Keep an eye out for electronic releases on your Libby app. And that said, do you have anything to add, Taylor? No, I'm excited to get started. Okay. So my first choice for this month is River of the Gods, Genius, Courage, and Betrayal in the Search for the Source of the Nile by Candace Millard. In 2017, author Candace Millard published River of Doubt, a riveting account of Theodore Roosevelt's harrowing journey down a tributary of the Amazon in 1913, a journey that nearly killed him. Now, in River of the Gods, Millard turns her attention to another epic journey of exploration. In 1854, Britain's Royal Geographic Society commissioned Sir Richard Burton to lead an expedition intended to locate the source of the White Nile in East Africa. Burton was accompanied by military officer John Hanning Speak and Sidi Mubarak Bombay, a formerly enslaved African whose knowledge of the local terrain and its inhabitants would prove indispensable. From the beginning, the underfunded explorers faced a plethora of hardships, scorching heat, drenching rain, near starvation, massive desertions, and threats from the region's large and well-organized indigenous kingdoms, not to mention sickness. The explorers suffered from typhoid, smallpox, infected wounds, bone-shattering fever, and near blindness. To top it off, in true Hollywood style, Speak became deaf in one year after, get this, a beetle burrowed into his ear canal, and Burton experienced a near year-long bout of paralysis that prevented him from joining Speak and Mubarak on the final leg of the trip to Lake Nyanza, which Speak identified as the expedition's holy grail, the source of the Great Nile River. But was he right? Burton vehemently disagreed. Tensions had already run high between the two strong-minded, temperamentally incompatible European explorers. Upon the return to Europe, their rivalry became venomous. Publishers Weekly gave River of the Gods a starred review and calls Millard's work, quote, a lushly detailed adventure story that keeps a steady eye on racial power dynamics involved in this imperialist endeavor and brilliantly illuminates the characters of Speak, Burton, and Bombay. Readers will be riveted. Both Kirkus and Library Journal also gave River of the Gods starred reviews. Kirkus calls it an engrossing, sharply drawn adventure tale, and LJ maintains that armchair travelers will be enthralled by this work. Wow, that, well one, I did not know about any of that to yeah. start. That is, that sounds like an incredibly oh, engaging read. like oh my goodness. And what, what's heartbreaking about it is the explorers in the end hated each other after having gone through all of, all of that. <laughs> So. Okay, well, on a uh, lighter note, I'm going to talk about the new fiction. So the first book I want to talk to you guys about is Book of Night by Holly Black. After almost 20 years of writing middle grade and young adult fiction, Holly Black is finally making her adult fiction debut. If you've ever read The Spiderwick Chronicles or even Modern Fairy Tales, you're already familiar with the insidious evil that lurks within her books. And if not, you're in for quite the treat. Um, in Book of Night, you follow the story of Charlie Hall, who currently bartends at a dive in the Berkshires, close by. Early in her life, she worked for the Glaumists, magicians who can control shadows to do their bidding. When the shadows couldn't complete the job, that's when Charlie would step in, whether it was to pick a lock or steal a book. Now, she's a semi-retired, low-level con artist. Um, desperately trying to rebuild her life away from the corruption of the Fey Realm. Try as she may escape the evil forces at hand, she finds herself out of the frying pan and into the fire, with her sister demanding access to the magic, a boyfriend who may literally be soulless, 
and a terrible figure from the past back to cause problems. Charlie finds herself deeper in trouble now than ever before. Kirkus says, the mystery elements are well executed, as is Charlie's characterization, and the big twist at the end packs a satisfying punch. Which, if there's one thing Holly Black does well, it's a satisfying twist. She is amazing at that. <laughs> you know, I don't read much YA fiction, but I've read some Holly Black, and her work was really my first exposure to Dark Fairy, which is up my alley. Oh my god, I forget the title of the first one I read, but it was phenomenal. So if her adult work measures up, uh, I'll be in for it. I'm definitely very content because as a teen, I loved the modern fairy tales. Spiderwick mm -hmm. Chronicles was a, a couple reading grades below me, so I didn't get into it, but I'm just excited to have her yeah. writing something technically for me now as yeah. a grown-up. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Okay, my next choice for this month is Embrace Fearlessly the Burning World, Essays by Barry Lopez. In his own words, this is how naturalist and National Book Award winner Barry Lopez described the work he did. Quote, I would bring my binoculars, find a place out of the wind, and pick over the land acre by acre watching for movement. And, he said, witness, not achievement, is what I was after. Witness he did and witness he was. From the beginning of his writing life, Lopez, who died on Christmas Day of 2020, conveyed in lyrical prose the wonder and grace that imbues the world's vast and dramatic spaces, as well as the threat that we, resource-hungry humans, pose. Now in his newest and last collection, Lopez continues to cry out. His essays are unflinchingly honest and often deeply personal, as when he addresses his own imminent death or the sexual abuse he experienced as a child. And always, always, he celebrates the natural world and sounds the alarm over its ongoing destruction. Quote, to survive what is headed, headed our way, he says, we will need to trust each other because today it's as if every safe place has melted into the sameness of water. We are searching for the boats we forgot to build. Book page named Embrace Fearlessly the Burning World, one of its most anticipated books of 2022. Author Margaret Atwood says that Lopez spoke the language of our inseparable connection with the natural world and calls his voice essential for our times. Kirkus calls Embrace Fearlessly the Burning World a sterling valediction and says that Lopez's many followers will treasure this book. I mean, yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, he's, he writes it's painstaking, he pays painstaking attention to the natural world and then writes about it beautifully. Gotta love that. And had done so for many years. Yeah. Well, shame to hear of his passing. Yeah. All right. Well, so my next fiction uh, pick is Siren Queen by Ni Vo. Luli Wei has worked hard for her roles as monsters. Starting as extras in films as a child, she made a promise to herself, no maids, no funny talking, no fainting flowers. After moving into the dorms on the studio lot, Luli blackmails a predatory director in order to get her big break as a siren. Now playing a monster, she's being introduced to the real monsters in Hollywood, those behind the silver screen. Directors, executives, or any upper management are desperate to get your real name, and not just for seeking new talent. Once they know your name, it's a way to own and control everything about you, ultimately ending in you becoming their puppet. Knowing this, Luli protects herself using her sister's name rather than her own, keeping herself just out of reach. After loving and losing multiple women co-stars, dealing with sexism and racism, and a constant slew of men trying to undermine and control her, the only way out of it all may be to turn into an actual monster. Steeped in magical realism, it's often hard to distinguish what is metaphor and what is mysticism in Nevo's Siren Queen. Woo! Yeah. Another one. Another one. Sounds intriguing. We love a fantasy novel. Oh, yeah, good one. With a lot of dark stuff in it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, my final choice for this month is Miss Memory Lane, a memoir by Colton Haynes. Four years ago, a young man named Colton Haynes woke up in a hospital. He'd had two seizures, lost the sight in one eye, 
almost ruptured a kidney and had been put on an involuntary psychiatry hold. He was not yet 30. He knew he had to change. But how had this happened? Colton had been signed to a modeling agency at the age of 16, had starred in two successful television series, MTV's Teen Wolf and CW's Error, Arrow, excuse me, beginning in 2020, 2011, and had legions of social media fans who claimed to adore him. His success, however, came with a hefty price tag. Over and over, he was told that while he had the looks to play the romantic lead, he just came across as too gay. To fulfill his promise, they said, Colton Haynes would have to, quote, play it straight. Ultimately, the stress involved in living an inauthentic life turned his use of drugs and alcohol into full-blown addiction and eventually led to that hospital bed. The story does not end there, however. With unflinching candor, Colton recounts the story of his coming out, his struggle with alcoholism, and his dark road to recovery. Kirkus calls Miss Memory Lane, quote, a lyrical, intimate confession, apology, and cautionary tale, an unforgettable story of dreams deferred and dreams fulfilled, of a family torn apart and rebuilt, and of a man stepping into the light as no one but himself. Wow, I think with stories like this especially of like young like actors and actresses coming out with how hard it is to be in the like limelight yes, so early yes. it's so just vulnerable and nice to vulnerable like, is the word they often use in yes, reviewing this it's book it's just so like an honest like here yes. i am like this is what it's really like. And I'm going to ask you a question. Had you heard of him before this book came out? No, I had heard of Teen Wolf. Um, mm -hmm. I never watched it, but I did not. I did not know about any of this. Okay, I hadn't either. But now I'm definitely going to read the book. Yes, absolutely. I don't know if I will commit to watching the TV show. I don't think I can do that. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. But <laughs> read the book. I will. Yes. <laughs> All right, and then I guess I'll wrap it up with the final fiction choice with You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Oweke Emezi, which I'm not sure if you've read any of their work before, but I read um, their young adult novel, Pet, and I'm currently reading Bitter, which is the prequel to Pet. Mm. Amazing writer. Could talk them up and down the river. like Really? Uh, okay. Tremendous, tremendous. Okay. So let's get into it, though. Faye is an artist whose husband died five years ago in a terrible car crash. Needing to live a completely different life in the aftermath of such terrible grief, she moves to New York to pursue art and to better bond with her best friend and roommate, Joy. Oh. Yeah. Faye has not exactly felt like dating or even entertaining the idea of a relationship, but with Joy's constant support and a chance meeting with a young man named Nazir, something changes. He's handsome, kind, and offers her an opportunity to advance her art career. His father happens to be on the board of directors for an art museum that's currently putting together an exhibition on the Black Diaspora. Nazir convinces his father to show the gallery curator her pieces, which they absolutely loved. So now, Faye finds herself invited out to his father's tropical home to work on her art. Faye, though, is still not convinced that she really likes Nazir, but regardless, accepts the offer tropical vacation home, her unsure but still wonderful new lover, and a blooming crush on the one person Faye shouldn't even be considering, alone, Nazir's father. Oh no! Yep. Not only is he on the board of director of the art museum and a celebrity chef, but he's a widower. The two shared experience of grief and loss brings them together in ways neither expected. This book is a wonderful example of Choosing love is sometimes one of the boldest, most defiant things you can do. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't really care for the, yeah. the romance book. Well, it depends. It depends. <laughs> Mostly no. But I don't rule it out ever. Fair enough. With that, we come to the end of our new releases show for the month of May. Please join us again next month with some other enticing newly published reads. And see you later, fellow readers. Bye. Thank you.